It is the 4th of October 2017, and that can mean only one thing. It is time for episode 27 of Boruto, a shinobi bout of friendship. It's time to rescue Denki. Although that didn't actually take that long. So, on the topic of Denki, the Denki rescue scene was actually pretty cool. The fight in the mist wasn't all that action packed, but it served basically as a way to trickle little bits of information about Kagura's past, which, as I've said over the last few episodes, I've actually really been into. The way they're doing it is really cool. They're not bombarding you with information. They're basically laying out a little trail for you to follow, and I really dig that type of storytelling. And honestly, Kagura's past seems really dark. I love that it implied he did terrible things, not just showing you to them. Obviously, I think part of this is that Boruto is not an 18 rated anime, it can't go very gory anyway. But there's just lots of implied things, and so far anyway, they haven't actually just out and out blatantly said what he's done. Although his past is a lot more complex than I initially thought as well, with the whole relation to Yagura thing. So I had to actually look this up, because Yagura didn't ring a bell to me originally, but then after a bit of googling I did realise that Yagura was indeed the Three Tails Jinchuriki, and was, I think, the Jinchuriki that died and then Ukitaka took over, the guy that blows bubbles. I could be wrong, if I am wrong I'll put an annotation somewhere maybe. Although, honestly, I don't actually remember hearing of Yagura doing that many terrible things. I know he was in the Blood Mist, so he did have to kill his friends and stuff. But overall, I don't remember him as being a particularly bad character. But then, again, as I said, I had to look up who Yagura was. Because the name didn't ring a bell to me, so if I can't even remember the dude's name, I probably can't remember much about him either. And Yagura actually leads into another interesting philosophical debate that the series has kind of been going for the last few episodes. Which is the sins of the father argument. Basically that one person can't be blamed on the actions of their parents or their grandparents because they are actually different people and grew up in a different time. And he kind of had that back and forth yet again with Boruto and the others about how he's not so far detached that he's completely unrelated to any of the past terrible events. But also, he's not any of those people, and he is his own person. And I really like that the series is willing to kind of sit down and talk about things like this. This is far from the only anime to ever address philosophical issues, but honestly, I really liked it anyway. And the whole card scene in general, I actually found quite captivating. It wasn't any new arguments or anything, but I don't know, I just found myself really hooked on that part. And I felt that overall, the episode went really quickly. When I paused to take one of the last screenshots, I was really surprised to see that it said nice minutes and not something like 12. And man, talk about the ending of the episode, that was actually pretty cool. Yeah, admittedly it's a very simple, the bad guy reveal kind of thing. But, I don't know, that never fails to get me hyped, especially in shounen anime. I do like the fact that they've kind of teased the bad guy over the last few weeks and the last few episodes. And he even made an appearance in the first Mist Village episode. And man, that little reveal of him opening the cheek gills and stuff, and, you know, confirming that he's Kisame's son, that was really cool. Admittedly, it wasn't quite as big a surprise for me because I did see online a few people mention he was Kisame's son. I don't know if he'd given a name and they knew from there, or maybe the mangas ahead, I'm not sure. But either way, it was a really cool reveal regardless. Kisame was one of my favourite characters from Shippuden. And before we get on to the next segment, I've also got to mention that we got a new intro and ending this episode. That surprised me quite a bit. Although, really, I shouldn't be surprised there's a new intro. There have been 26 episodes now, and that's pretty standard for shounen anime. But I completely forgot. Though the new intro is called Over by Little Greed Monster, which is interesting. It sounds like Nine Inch Nails' first album, but mistranslated. I thought it was okay. It's a little bland sounding on first listen. I'm sure it'll grow on me a little bit. But I still think overall the first intro for Boruto kind of outlined the mood for the series a little more. It sounded a bit kind of punkish with elements of new sounds. Whereas this one sounds more like a kind of generic anime opening. Again though, as I said, it'll probably grow on me. This is just my first impression. And I did also notice that Kagura features in the opening. So either he's going to play a part in the rest of the series, or they'll make a new intro once the Kagura arc finishes. Although, as I've stated before, I would really like Kagura to be a mainstay character. Maybe not feature in a load of episodes, but kind of be someone that Boruto sees now and again. The new outro was actually pretty cool as well. And as far as I can translate it, it says Endain Gutema or Endain Guntema. I 
don't know, something like that. I've probably horribly pronounced that. If anyone does know the actual translation, please let me know in the comments below. I like the ending a lot, actually. It's kind of soft, but still had a good pace to it. I still think Sayonara Moontown is my favourite ending, but then I've only heard this one once either, so that could change as well. The animation was your fairly typical character walks through his memories thing. It was nice enough, it served the purpose. And talking about serving the purpose, it is time for NEXT TIME. Well, it looks like Kagura is going to release the beast, maybe. Or he's at least going to be kind of crazy when he unleashes his sword. Which hopefully he does. I liked the little mention in the episode, which then called back to the episode before, where Boruto sparred with him. There's probably a point I should have mentioned before getting on to the next time segment, but whatever. And that about wraps it up for my review for episode 27 of Boruto. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy this, then maybe consider giving a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't enjoy. And of course, subscribing would be really cool, especially as you'll then be notified when I put up other reviews and my other random weeb-related videos. And as always, if you do have anything to contribute or ask me, do feel free to put it in the comment section below. And until next time, sayonara.